Right, we're going to have a look around our project Air Sport L494. Um, this is the one we bought crash damaged from Copart, but it was sort of crash damaged but sort of repaired. And it's always worrying when you buy something off Copart that's sort of repaired because you don't know how sort of repaired it is. Well, as you've already seen, the bodywork was fairly badly repaired and you're just about to see now the horrors of the airbag repair, repair in inverted commas. So, right, let's have a look in here. Let's have a look. Right, so if I go this side, maybe Dan, you go around the other side and you can point out some bits for us. So, it's a bit dark in here, but hopefully it's okay. So, you should have your seatbelt mechanism here, which you can see on the floor there. And part of the seatbelt mechanism is there's a connector here. Let me see if I can zoom in and get that on. Right, and you can see this is the connector, and that should fire a little. It's quite tricky actually. It fires a load of. Um, it's got an explosive charge, and it fires some ball bearings down this this pipe here. If you turn it over, and it, it comes along here, and then along here, and then it comes up here, and then it goes round the side. And what it does is it it spins the it spins this wheel, which retracts your seatbelt. So that's your seatbelt retractor pretension and mechanism now there should be a connector on here but what we found when we took this out show them the end of that so we found no connector but if you look at that you can see it's got a resistor soldered across the wires so they've obviously tricked the system into thinking the airbags are okay or the in this case the pretension is okay by bodging a resistor on there so hopefully you can see that we'll take that off and see what value so so that's one thing that worries us another thing we thought we'd check while we're down here is the crash sensors so obviously this car's had a side crash impact if you lift the bit of carpet up here down and lift up that bit there so on that bolt there let me zoom in a bit on that bolt that's sticking out there should be a crash sensor and there was so i've just tested the crash the impact sensor because that's the one this where this side was crashed it would be now the other thing that's quite horrific you can see there can you point out that crease there there we go that crease there go right at the top where's that top bit there there oh, it's too dark there's a horrible little crease in here hopefully you can see that at home there you go yeah it's caught it there the, the camera's caught up there so that's where they've jacked it out against the there's a seat mount in the floor here and i think they've put a ram across to straighten it so it's looking pretty grisly but not too bad having said that the floor's all square the seat belt mount all looks fine i think it just i think it took something fairly high up the door right then we get on to the next bit which is the curtain airbags so across here you should have a curtain airbag that goes across. Now, the headlining had little telltale crease signs in it. Uh, I wasn't surprised. Right, let me go around the other side. So there we go. We're in the car. So there's the, a the sort of a telltale crease. It's hard to see now. Put the, um, but if you buy a car and you can sort of see a bit of a worrying crease, be worried because when the airbags deploy, it just sort of pushes this headline in like so and fires the curtain out from under here. Now, we've loosened these hand grips and removed the light. Um, and that's allowed us to pull this down. And we can pull the headlining down. And inside, we can see... There we go. We can see in there. And there's a series of bolt holes. But what we found bolted in there, we will now show you over on the table. So, what did we find? So, we were hoping we would find a long sausage airbag we've coiled it up here just to fit it on the table that's that's retained by these bolts but what we found was a series of cut out deployed airbag things there we go and also where the airbag connector should plug in here and that little plug there we found another two wires joined together with a resistor across them to make it think that the airbag had been replaced and was present so obviously what this is is an explosive charge in here you've got an explosive charge you you put some voltage in here fires off the explosive and inflates the airbag so we now have to replace the airbag 
find a connector and get the connector back on. Now the manual says we should you shouldn't repair a wire bag uh, an airbag loom, um, but we'll probably solder a connector on. I think we'll be okay with that. Right, so there's that now. <laughs> we, right, what else are we doing, right? So these are the actual side impact sensors. So I'm not sure how these work. We've read all the documentation on Land Rover topics, and it doesn't say whether these need resetting or replacing after a crash. So I think it seems sensible on that side to replace them. So we bought a new one, but we I don't know if this is correct, but I've done a, a little resistance test. So let me just give the camera over to Dan. So, so these aren't explosives, these are only sensors, so we can play a little bit more easily with these. So if I put it onto resistance, and I've just got an airbag connector here, link, so, I, so I've got a little airbag, sorry, a sensor connector, and I've linked it up to a couple of leads. Just, it's, sorry, it's a bit of a bodge, but it, it works, right? And then when you put the, let me try one of these, when you get it the right way around and plug one of those on, whoop, Right. right, this is showing 3.5 mega ohms, so a very high resistance. Okay, so I think that's a good one. Um, I did buy, I did buy a new one. Where's the bit gone? That's it. You got to press that little bit in there to release it. So, so we think he's okay. Let's try this other one here. Interestingly, he's showing. About 1.2 mega ohms. Okay, all right. Let's try. That's those two tested. And this one's about 1.2 mega ohms as well. So let me just check them all again. Check they're all the same. 1.2, 1.2. On 3.5 now interestingly the only the, the new one is this one here this is the the brand new one that's at 3.5 um, so I'm not sure if both of those are damaged one is out the left side and the other one's out the right hand side but obviously both of them may have seen a, a severe jolt to the side right so that's that right this is we bought a new so as well as a replacement curtain airbag we bought a new um, and it's probably easier to see that thing I was going on about here. So you can see the helter skelter. So there's your connector. This is your explosive charge, and it fires some ball bearings round this loop, round this loop, and then as it goes past the mechanism here, it winds it up apparently and tightens the reel and sort of pulls you back in your seat. Um, so we've got a new one of those to replace, and we'll do a video of how to replace your seatbelt. Because our other car, the seatbelt doesn't retract on the Range Rover Rail 405. So I think these will wear out, not necessarily because they've been crashed and the retractor's gone, but because the seatbelt gets sticky. Right. Um, so that's testing that. Another interesting thing is, so this is the deployed airbag. Now, this gets a bit dodgy now, but you can test across these two pins. But the, actually, they're really clever because there's actually a little bar in here that when you unplug the connector, the bar comes down. So if you've got the two, the two pins there, there's a bar that comes across and shorts the two to stop you getting any voltage across them because it acts as a short. So it stops airbags deploying. But when you put the connector on, right? So if we've got a little connector here, if we put the connector on here, this is the connectors we've got to find. It only goes on one way. So that goes on that way. You push it in and what this will do is this will if i do a quick check on this long bit of wire that we've got here this should show a high resistance yeah so that's got 2.2.5 wait for it 2.5 mega ohms 2.6 mega ohms but if you remove this connector it will show a short it will Okay, so I just push that. Yeah, when you remove these connectors, you've got to pull this central bit out first, and then you should better lift off the connector. Um, but yeah, if I just do a straight test now, don't go trying to probe live airbags because the voltage 
the voltage from your voltmeter will in theory set them off although there's some people on the internet that have done it without it exploding and i'm tempted to have a go and see if that's true or not um you can see that 0 .0, 0.2 ohms but actually if i just touch the probes together you can see it's about the same reading look so that that connector has a little shorting bar in there right so that's that so we don't need to test this one's not exploded. You can see that that exploded, not exploded. What we thought more difficult to test is whether the airbag connector there is connected or not connected. So it'd be interesting maybe to see what the one in the car is like versus this brand new one. Um, but it could be a bit dangerous and testing airbags with voltage sources is not recommended. But should we give it a go then? Yeah, I think yeah. so. Right. Okay, so we'll set this up and we'll see what happens. Right, so we've we've got it set up in the vice, in the workshop. We've made this super long leak because we, we don't want to be near it in case it blows off. So what we're doing here is highly dangerous. Do not do this at home. But we're just seeing with this multimeter. Now, different multimeters will create different voltages, which is why I wouldn't recommend doing this. It might be fine with my multimeter, but another multimeter might set the explosive charge off. So I'm going to see on a new airbag what the resistance is if it doesn't explode. Right, so we're standing well back here. Right, let me have a go. I can hold that one on. Right, and can you can you see my meter down? You got that? Right, here goes. Are we going to read anything? Nearly. All that. And try again. It sort of gets something, and then it doesn't like it, does it? It does an initial reading of like six point eight ohms, two point seven. There you go. There you go. That's stable. So it's about two point seven ohms. Now let's get the one in the car that we don't know has gone off or not. But again, don't try this at home, all right? But let's have a look what the one in the car is. Okay, so we've got the seat belt out of the car. On this one, we don't know whether it's deployed or not. Now, interesting. The driver's side seat belt, which this is, has two pre-tensioning mechanisms. So it has this one that's bolted to the seat. You can see there where it bolts through. And this clearly has a cable here. And it fires a charge here, out here. Boof, and then that pulls and it spins this little bit round and retracts the seat belt at this side but clearly that hasn't gone off because it's all sealed here and um, it's coiled round so i think it would be uncoiled and i think there'd be some evidence of something here um so that's that but only when i looked on our car and there wasn't one on this passenger side seat when there wasn't one on here i thought oh they've taken it off but it's only fitted on the driver's side. So on the driver's side you have this pretensioner and also this one with the old helter skelter and all the ball bearings going around. So where we're at now is I don't know if this seat belt has been deployed. I'm pretty happy that hasn't, but we do know they've soldered a resistor in where this connector should be, which makes me think there's some monkey business going on. So let's test this one in the same way we tested that new one. And that was what, 2.9 ohms, wasn't it, Dan? Yep. Right, so let me just mount again. This is dangerous again. But, right, so here's my little tester. Make sure my multimeter's off when I'm standing next to it. Make sure I get this connector on the right way, which I believe is that way. Right, push it down. And remember, you can't probe the pins because it's, it's shorted. So... Right, let's have a look. Where are we now? So, right. so we're going to stand back a bit. Right, so I've got my wires. I've got this. Right, let's stand back over here, Dan. In fact, we can make use of the table quite well here, can't we? So we're on resistance. Right, there's one probe. Right, and let's see what this one does. Right, there's no banging. Right, that is 36 mega ohms. That is not 2.7 ohms, right? So I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure that one has 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 fired. 
Okay, let's try and get it again. Yeah, that's got some mega. That that is a really high resistance. Yeah. Okay, so that's one way to test. Right, we're nearly finished. Right, the last thing I was worried about. So, when you have a crash, if you have a front crash, it puts your passenger airbag and your driver's airbag, depending if or not whether or not you've got a passenger in there. Um, it will deploy your seatbelt. But if you have a side impact, it doesn't bother putting the driver's airbag off. And we've changed the steering wheel and the steering wheel airbag was all good. So the one thing that I'm left worrying about was the seat. So I'm a bit worried about the driver's seat. So let me just grab this out here. Well, I might be able to do it here. So I've, I've taken the back off the driver's seat, which wasn't too hard. You can see you've got the hooks at the top there. That hooks in. You've got a couple of little hooks that are just hooked onto these webs here. You undo that, give it a yank up. It's got a couple of these, can you see these spring clips along here? So you have to give it a bit of a jerk to get it out. And then what we're looking at is, so this is obviously the middle of the car with the armor. This is the one here where the airbag is on the side. And I've managed to get in here and we can see here that this airbag cushion is all good. That hasn't been exploded. That's all good and the connections are all on. So I'm happy that they've replaced the seats. So I think they've replaced the doors, they've replaced the bumpers, they've replaced the seats. So the airbag, the um, the things they've missed is, the, well not missed by accident, missed on purpose is the curtain airbag and the um, driver's seat belt. Um, so I think we'll, we've got all the bits to fix that. So we're going to do, we'll fix the seatbelt. We'll probably do a video for how to change the seatbelt. We'll put all the car together and then do a separate video for that. If there's anything else you want to know, let us know. Airbags are dangerous. Safety restraint systems are important. So it's not something you should be doing. But anyway, I hope this video helps.